in that legal circle, so I would be doing for other people what some people did for me. That's why, you know, so often you have blurbs, you know, and I wanted the blurb right at where people yeah, could see it immediately. And then the pictures uh, have kind of a, a, you know how you'll write, uh, here, look at those, uh, you know how you'll write a kind of a catchy blurb for a serious book? So it's like some of these are a little catchier um, than I would have thought, but they wanted very much, oh, like this one. I went to Congress and testified against Clarence Thomas. I had been at a Planned Parenthood meeting, and they had pictures of pregnant men. One was black, so I took him and then put Clarence Thomas's head on him. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then was saying that, you know, I thought if he had been pregnant, you know, he would have a more expanded <laughs> view of who should make this oh decision. God, that's, so funny. Uh, that's why they were, and then this, of course, everybody's heard of Ann Richards, mm -hmm. and the picture, uh, Megan, right there by your thumb. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Ann Richards to the far left. Okay. So she was working with me, and yes, Barbara's not in this picture, but she was around just shortly after that. And then, of course, my husband and I at the, over at the Capitol. The hard thing for him was that he had run for office and did not get elected. And then I ran and I did. And, uh, and then, of course, the picture's in the White House, and this is um, the Oval Office where the president is signing the extension of the ERA, which was what Barbara worked on and was so effective. And, uh, and, uh, I did an article for Good Housekeeping Magazine, so Johnson, uh, at their branch, with Mrs. Johnson, and then me, and then Rosalind Carter, and then Betty Ford, oh, and so they were all women who were involved in women's issues. This was Amy Madigan. Do you remember seeing If You Build It, He Will Come, Fields yeah, I, of Dreams? Mm -hmm. And so she um, played the wife in that, and then she played me in the movie, Roe vs. Wade. Oh, wow. So the movie was actually, uh, Jane Roe sold her story for the movie. Did you, what did you think of the portrayal of you? Um, I thought it was basically very accurate. Yeah. yeah. So I did go out to Hollywood, and just to meet, I just went to a coffee shop and met her, and she said she thought the hardest role to play was a live person. Because most of the time you could just make up the role. Mm -hmm. Or if it was someone dead, oh, yeah. no one had any idea mm -hmm. of what they were really like. So she said playing a live person was really, yeah. really tough. What about your interaction with Norma after the fact? Have you talked to her at all? Not since she changed sides, which yeah. was 95. Yeah. I don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Although she seemingly wants to talk to everybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's on college campuses. She's, she's doing her gig. Yeah. Is there a sequel in all of this? Um, well, I'm going to start, you know, she had, her first book was called I Am Roe. That was when she was pro choice. Right. Her second book is called No More Roe, which is after she changed sides and then was trying to get it overturned. Right. Um, so is there a sequel for her? Or for, or for you. For me. I'm, I'm going to start writing another book and it will have some of what's happened since this book. Right. Um, but in a legal sense, no. Right. Because, you know, you know, I mean, this this will not, Roe versus Wade will be the issue, but it's not really, are you going to overturn or uphold Roe versus Wade directly? So it'll be a new person who will take the center spotlight. Right. And that's okay. Well, in one sense, by doing it, if you did a sequel on that, you're sort of, it's kind of like arguing against yourself. Yeah. And also, you, I think everyone wants to have a life that goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't just stop at something you did at 26. Right. So while I certainly want to be part of defending it, mm -hmm. it's like you really want to do. And that's the hard part for me, right. that we've never been, it's like, I called it, I feel pinned down by sniper fire. Right. Because you're always having to come to the rescue and mm -hmm. try to do this or that. And it would be nice if you could go on work on some other issues, because right. there's certainly other issues. Too.